Today's video is going to be all about fragrances that were love at first sniff. So if you like the sound of that, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be all about fragrances that were love at first sniff. And I have a mixture of new fragrances and older fragrances within my collection. So there is a variety for you here. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Before we get started, actually, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. It really helps this channel out and I appreciate you so, so much. The first fragrance is from Zerzhov. It's Casamirati Bouquet Adil. And this one just resonates with me. It's in my top 10 fragrances for life and it feels very me whenever I wear it. Very underrated from Zerzhov, especially from the Casamirati line. Obviously, Lyra gets a lot of hype, as does Dama Bianca, but I absolutely adore this one. You would have seen reviews on my channel already, and it was definitely a love at first sniff for me. Now, the name doesn't really sum up how this fragrance smells. You would think this is a bouquet of florals, at least I did anyway, but it's not. It's more of a spicy vanilla and it's got lots of cinnamon. It's got nutmeg. There's beautiful vanilla in the base, a little bit of a kind of tonka bean vibe. And then there is some tobacco leaf too. I almost get a dark red berry vibe from this as well, which is not listed within the notes. It's just how I perceive the overall composition. But in essence, it's a spiced soft vanilla with a sweetness that I perceive to be red berries. You are getting lots of nutmeg, you are getting lots of cinnamon. And then there's that white tobacco flower in the base, which doesn't come across heavy in any way. It just adds such a robust feeling to the overall composition. I find this one to be very sensual. I feel very empowered whenever I wear it and it was definitely a love at first sniff. This one was actually a blind buy for me and it was very, very successful. So absolutely had to include it in this list. The next fragrance is very new to my collection and it is the newest release from Byron and this is Moola Moola double caramel. And of course, this is love at first sniff. So it doesn't matter if it's a new fragrance or an old fragrance in my collection. I've only worn this once. It is incredible. If you love the original Moola Moola by Byron, you need to get your nose on double caramel. Now, I will probably use this sparingly because it is a limited edition from Byron. But wow, this takes the original DNA of Moola Moola, which is very, very loved within the fragrance community. And it just adds a sweet dose of caramel. I would already say that the original composition was very caramelized. It was fruity, it was sweet, but it had this caramelized edge to it. Well, double caramel just steps it up a notch and makes this even more delicious. I will go as far as to say this is my favorite Moola Moola out of the three that they now have. It overall is a very delicious fruity fragrance. You definitely still get the strawberry, the raspberry, you get the vanilla. There's a hint of ginger in the opening. There's a very, very soft oud, which I do not perceive to be oud. It's just a slightly woody base to my nose at the very least. And then you get that double dose of caramel. Chef's Kiss, I absolutely love it. Now, like I said, it is still very new to my collection, so I will do a more in-depth review of it in the future, but I had to include it in this video because it is a new release and it is limited edition, but so far, so good, and it's actually my scent of the day, and I just feel like I smell so delicious. I feel like it's perfect for the fall and the winter, and I will do a more in-depth review in a future video, but yeah, Moola Moola Double Caramel, Chef's Kiss, love at first sniff. The next fragrance is from Giardini di Toscana, and no, it is not Bora Bora or Bianco Latte. This one is Celeste. And this one is starting to get a little bit more attention from the house. I think the house is very hyped at the moment, especially Bianco Latte, but don't sleep on Celeste because this is incredible 
incredible. It's slightly unique. There are fragrances that smell a little bit similar to it, but it has this unique edge to it. So imagine a gourmand candied violet note with lots of vanilla in the base. In the dry down, I do get the Bianco Latte DNA, and that's where you get all of that vanilla dry down. But in the opening, this is a blast of violet candies. Now we have something called Parma Violets here in the UK. I'm not sure if they are sold internationally, but I get Parma Violets from this composition. There is also some sweet fruitiness. I'm getting a raspberry notes and then lots of ambroxin, which makes this an absolute bomb of a fragrance. This sillage is absolutely insane. It leaves a big scent trail and it lasts all day on the skin. So I would highly recommend getting a sample of this one if you do like Bianco Latte because they're in a similar category, but this one is more a powdery violet on top. It's got lots of ambroxin and there's a slight freshness in the opening. I would definitely say this is the fresher sister of Bianco Latte and I feel like it's definitely slept on at the moment. Like I said, it is starting to get a little bit more love, but Celeste was a love at first sniff for me. And Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes actually sent me a sample of this one back in May or June time. And I remember sampling it when I was on honeymoon because I took all of the samples that she sent me on honeymoon with me and it was love at first sniff. It was my favorite sample out of the batch. So yeah, Celeste is definitely a winner for me and one of the best from Giardini di Toscana. The next fragrance is one of the newest releases from Argos and this one is called Birth of Venus. And oh my gosh, this is one of the biggest reactions I have ever had to a fragrance. Absolutely love at first sniff, completely addictive, very new to my collection, of course, it's just released. The juice, the juice inside this is incredible. This is now my favorite fragrance from the house and they have some incredible scents and I don't wanna hype this up too much. Definitely get a sample. But wow, did they knock this one out of the park? This is the most gorgeous fruity floral fragrance. It has a backbone and I do not have anything that remotely smells similar to this. It's very likable and almost very mass appealing, but at the same time, it is the most incredible composition and I feel like it has been perfectly done. I'm actually going to read you some of the notes off of my phone to give you a bit more of a rounded picture of this fragrance and then I will tell you what I perceive from it. So this has grapefruit, lavender, orange blossom and peach. You then have chocolate, iris, jasmine, raspberry, rose and violet. In the base, you have amber, cashmere wood, labdanum, vetiver, and cedar. And in the opening, this is a juicy explosion, as I've already mentioned. The mist is beautiful too. Oh, how do I explain this? How do I explain this? Very, very sweet in the opening. And it's a fruity flower. That's the only way I can describe it. All of the notes blend seamlessly together. I'm not getting one thing that stands out front stage and center, but I'm definitely getting a heavy floral nuance. I think it's the Narcissus that I'm picking up the most right now in the air. I'm definitely getting a tart and sour grapefruit in the opening, but then you're getting that beautiful sweetness from the peach and the raspberry. The iris kind of tones this down a little bit, takes that sweetness down a notch and gives it a kind of powdery feel to it. I don't really get chocolate per se, but there's this powdered creaminess within the composition. I also get the violet, which is a match made in heaven with that iris note. And then you're getting a beautiful jammy rose. It dries down with a woody base, but I will say the florals and the fruitiness remain right through to the dry down. The sourness of the grapefruit, of course, dissipates after a while, and you're just left with the most intoxicating fruity floral. Now, I always recommend that you sample first. I will link somewhere where you can get a sample down below, but wow, this one was a home run for me. 
a complete love at first sniff. I think the packaging is absolutely beautiful too. I will do a more in-depth review in the future, but wow, this is one of the best new releases of 2023 thus far to me. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will know that I absolutely love Peregrina by Tamine. This one was a love at first sniff for me. I bought it instantly in Selfridges once I smelt it. And I've been making quite a significant dent in this one for me. I do struggle to make dents in my fragrances, but Peregrina is one of those easy reaches within my collection. I'm always in the mood for it. It smells incredible. I feel very feminine and sexy every time I wear this one. And it almost is a little bit similar to Moolah Moolah in some ways, whereas I would say this is very signature scent worthy. It's a sweet floral caramel fragrance that develops beautifully on my skin and projects beautifully too. I mostly get a very sweet rose and a big dose of caramel. There's definitely vanilla in the base too. The ylang ylang is quite prominent, but I would say the rose is more prominent than that ylang ylang note. You also have lots of amber in here, but it's a soft translucent amber. There's a little bit of myrrh, and then you've got this powdery musk in the base. But overall, it's a very sweet floral and I love it so much. I can't see me falling out of love with this one. And it was such a hit for me when I first smelt it, which is why I instantly bought it on the spot. Yeah, Peregrina was an absolute love at first sniff for me. The next fragrance is another new addition to my collection, but I've wanted this one for the longest time. And you will understand why when I share this fragrance. And it is from Olfactive Studio and it is Lumiere Blanche. And I had seen quite a few reviews on this one and it took me a while to sample it, but I am so glad to now have it in my collection. I need to give you a close up of this bottle because the juice inside is almost milky. I guess it almost has not a holographic feel to it, that's the wrong word, but it has this dreamy vibe about it. So let me give you a close up. Can you see the bottle's clear at the top corner and then it's almost got this cloudy, milky juice? I think it is so aesthetically pleasing, but the fragrance, this is the milky, clean, musky dream to my nose anyway. I absolutely love this one. As you probably already know by the title of this video, it was a love at first sniff. And I feel like it fits in perfectly with the aesthetic that I love most within fragrances. So the notes of this has cardamom, star anise and cinnamon up top. And then you've got almond, cashmere wood and iris through the mid. And then the base is sandalwood, musk, cedar and tonka bean. This is a dream. If you like Blanche Bette, but you want something without the florals and slightly less vanillic, I think you will love Lumiere Blanc. I think this is phenomenal and you're going to be seeing this a lot on my channel. Again, I don't wanna hype it up too much. I need to spend some more time with it, but this fragrance needed to be in my collection. I love the milky juice, I love the brand aesthetic, but I love the juice inside. As you probably already know if you watch my channel, I love cardamom fragrances, I also love iris fragrances, and even more than both of those, I love musky fragrances. So this combines the best of all of those notes, and yeah, it was absolutely love at first sniff for me. And the last fragrance is a trusty favorite within my collection, and it is none other than Rehab by Anishio. I love the Hedonist collection from Anishio. All three of the white bottles I think are phenomenal, but there is something that pulls me towards rehab whenever I don't know what to wear, whenever I want something that's an easy reach that will make me feel comforted. Rehab is just that fragrance for me. And I know it's called rehab, but I see this to be my zen-like fragrance. I went to this wellness retreat and this was my fragrance that I took with me and I feel like it was just perfect for the occasion. It's a woody aromatic scent. So you're gonna get lots of woods. You're gonna get some lavender in the opening. 
it's soft yet at the same time it projects beautifully i got lots of compliments when i was wearing this at the wellness retreat you do get lots of lavender in the opening which is very calming and then in the base there's lots of soft woods so think sandalwood think guyac wood there's a little bit of cedar and then you've got a dose of musk I wouldn't say this is an overly musky fragrance. To me, this is perfectly balanced. It's perfectly unisex, and it just makes me feel calm and relaxed, as I've already mentioned. So this is my Zen fragrance of choice. It was love at first sniff years ago, and it's still love at first sniff every time I sample this one. It's a great signature scent and I will love this one forever. So those are all of the fragrances that I wanted to show you today. They were all love at first sniff. Of course, they've made it to this video, but I would love to know your feedback on these fragrances. Have you sampled any of them? If so, what do you think? Are they loves, hates, or somewhere in the middle? But what I want to know, and it's the thing that I always want to know, is what fragrances for you were a love at first sniff? Please let me know down in the comments, but thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.